Hey guys, it's Kenny here back again with another video. I want to show you guys how to actually add a image as planes and kind of remove the black background. So you have this transparent image uh, within Blender. Now this is really, really simple to do. So I'm going to delete the cube and the light starting off here, guys. I head over to cycles, GPU. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go over to like my render view here. I'm first going to just save this as transparent image. Okay. All right, and what I wanna do is I actually wanna find an image with a black background. It's gonna work best with that type of image. So let me go to my random folder here. All right, so something like this would work really well. This one with this flip fluid logo, excuse me. Uh, this one would work well. Again, you wanna kinda of find something with a black background. Um, normally I look for something like this with like a texture. So let's go ahead and try this image here. So we have our image right here, right? I'm gonna scale it up. Now you're gonna notice it's kind of hard to see right now, but we're gonna make it easier to see. Head over to the shading tab here, and I'm actually gonna paste in the specific nodes I used last time. Or actually, no, I'm not, I apologize. I'll just, I'll just redo them for you guys. So we have our image connected to our principal BSDF. We have our material output. First, we're gonna add a mix shader. We're gonna pop that in right here. Add a transparent BSDF. And we're actually gonna plug the transparency into the shader. And then we're gonna plug a color ramp into the FAC like that. And then we're gonna plug the color into the FAC here. And then we're just going to go like this here. Excuse me, there we go. So we're gonna move these around until we kind of have what we want. And that's basically it. So this is the node set up here. And that's basically how you get a transparent image in Blender. Now what's really cool is you can then mix, like instead of using this principal BSDF, you could swap in an emission shader, which is what I like to do a lot. Like this. So you have an emission shader, your color ramp, and then your transparent BSDF, just like that. And basically what you do is you take these sliders and you just slide them around until you find something you like. Now I actually think that looks pretty darn good. Something like that. Now what's cool is if I go and I add a plane in here, you'll notice this thing is actually emitting light, right? How cool is that? Now again, this is a completely transparent image within Blender now. Um, and now watch what happens if I swap it with another image. Boom, that's also transparent. Now again, you're gonna have to uh, increase your brightness or whatnot to get the results you want. You can see that with the full gradient here, we have a pretty good transparency of this image. Um, I'm gonna test a different image because I wanna show you guys, this is like a logo. Again, it's gonna be a little distorted because we're just swapping the image with the same image plane, so it's gonna be a little distorted. You're gonna to have to add a new image plane again if you guys wanna do this. Um, this is another logo right here. Again, we're just removing that background. It works really well when it's just a solid black background. Uh, let's go ahead and try one more. I'm just trying to show you guys kinda of how this works. This is a good one. Perfect, so again, depending on how you slide these around, you're gonna get different results. Basically, this is taking the black out of the image and then the second part of the image is just the transparency. So as you can see, when I unplug the transparency, it completely goes away, right? So yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. And what's cool about this, again, you can adjust the emission strength. You can kind of make it more emissive or less, em less emissive. So I just thought this was a really cool trick, and I don't think a lot of people understand how to do this. A lot of the times you do something like this in Photoshop, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it in Blender because Blender's free. Photoshop costs money, I get it. So I'm trying to show you guys different options that you have here. Now remember, when you if you slide things too far, you can start to lose some of your image. So just be careful here, guys. Um, we can try it with this. Now this this one is actually, wow, well, actually came out pretty good. I did not expect it to come out that good, but it did. And again, you can take this. There's so much you can do with this. Um, I'm just gonna show you really, really quick. Um, this isn't really supposed to be part of the tutorial, but if you take like a texture, and you take, like, I didn't want to get into this, but I can't help it because it's so much fun. If you take mapping, texture, coordinate node, and, like, any texture, plug in the generated to the vector, vector into the vector, and then your height into your image, you can now take this image and you can, like, basically do anything you want with it. So I'll just start this off at, like, a scale of, like, something small. Look how cool that is. And, and that, that was completely made just from an image. So at this point, you can't really tell what's going on. Um, and you can kind of adjust this texture and you can just do like whatever you want with it. And this is just a really fun, quick way to like get results with images. I love doing this. I do it all the time for a lot of projects. Uh, I'll show you another example here. 
So yeah, uh, again, we're, we're just <laughs> using separate images here. Let me find another image with a little bit more complication to it. Uh, how about this one? Again, guys, look what happens when you take one of these and you just kind of mess around with it. You can get some really, really cool results. Uh, remember, you have to have an image plugged in there with a black background. Um, it's not going to work very well if it does not have a black background. Uh, let's try this one. That's kind of neat. See how these effects, and this is just all based on an image. Now, again, you unplug this texture, you have your transparent image. But I think it's fun to mess around with the texture. In fact, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll take a, like I'll just take something like this and I'll just completely distort it and use it for like my project. Like now you have an abstract background um, in like two seconds, right? Or you can take this, you can plug multiple textures into it. There is a lot of cool stuff that you guys can do here. So let me know what you guys come up with. Um, play around with it, you know, plug different images in, see what kind of results you can get. This one is code. This one's kind of cool. Now I bet if I unplug it, yep, there you go. There's your code. Let's say you want to make a TV screen with some code on it. There you go. That's how you would do that. And again, you plug a texture in there and you just have a completely different result. And it just looks so cool. Um, now I think you should be able to also plug in the mapping just to your image itself. Um, and then you can kind of adjust like where the image is, how it's rotated, the scale. You're probably not going to want to mess with the scale too much, but you can. Um, but I, I prefer kind of plugging the texture and just messing around with it like that. I just think it looks so cool. And, and at a certain point, it becomes like you kind of protect yourself from that copyright because um, the image is distorted so much you have no idea what this original image is. If I asked you what this was from, you, you, you would not be able to tell me. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, again, be careful. Don't take someone's image and use it without like getting permission. Try to find stuff that is copyright free. Um, I'm not promoting stealing people's work at all. But I hope you guys have fun with this technique. I hope you're able to now take the black out of an image and make it transparent. Again, this was supposed to be a very short tutorial, but I get carried away. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next tutorial.